In this MapSuite MVC Edition sample app walkthrough, we're going to show you how you can display or load a grid file feature layer within MapSuite. So as we take a look at our uh, sample application here, you can see we've basically got two layers. We've got these point layers here, which represent the original sample data um, that, that were received. And then we've got a grid file layer down here, which has built a, a, gridded, a, a grid layer based upon the sample data. And in this case here, we're actually doing an inverse relationship where if, if our sample data was green, we're displaying it red here and, and so forth. But you can see there is a relationship to where the dots are based upon you know, how the fills of, these, of this grid layer is. So for example, where we have the red dots, we've got more gray areas. Where we've got the green dots, we've got the red areas here. And then the yellow dots, you've got uh, more of a yellow and then the, the variances in between all of the dots accordingly. So. This sample doesn't show how to actually create the grid file. If you're interested in that, we've got another sample on our wiki um, over here that shows how to cr actually create grid files from your sample data. So I'd, uh, um, I'd invite you to take a look at this, uh, this sample if you need to create your own grid files. But uh, for this sample, we already can assume that we have our grid file created and we just want to display it on the map control. So let's take a look at the code of how this can be accomplished. So we're going to do this by looking at the view source code. And uh, here we've got where we're adding the map to the page and, and setting it up when the, the sample app is loaded. So uh, we're, we're just setting our current extent here, you know, creating our map, its size, etc. And then down here is where we're going to add our um, grid layer and also our shapefile layer containing the sample points to the map. So the first part uh, we're going to do is we're going to set up a class break style to apply to our grid file. So here we've uh, created our grid file feature layer and this is passing in the path of where the, the GRD file exists. And then down here we add the class break style to the uh, custom styles collection off of the grid feature and then apply that for all 20 zoom levels. Now if you're not familiar with what class break styles are, they're basically a good way to set different styles based on a range of a value. So for example here, we've got all these different styles set up, red, green, blue, yellow, silver, snow, black, and transparent. And the way this is controlled is if, uh, if we've got a value between 6.83 and 7.0, this style is going to be, this snow is going to be displayed. Between 7.0 and 7.07 .07 or 7.08, silver is going to be displayed. And from 7.08 to 7.15, the yellow is going to be displayed, and so on and so forth. So, and of course if it's zero, we're just going to do black, and if it's even less than zero, we're going to do transparent. We don't even want to display it in that case. So that class break style, you may say, well, where, what are these numbers uh, referenced to? They're referenced to the cell value um, associated with the, the grid file. So whatever you know, your name is for the class break style of the actual value of each cell in the grid is what this number is going to key off of. So these can be very powerful for rendering uh, the type of thematic maps that you see in this sample. Um, now down here, we're doing, uh, um, this is where we're setting up our shapefile that actually has our, our sample point data that we originally used to create the grid file from. So because we don't know the pH values for every, you know, every square inch of the ground, we just have samples across that field and we've gridded it out accordingly you know, using an algorithm that I talked about in that, that other sample that you can reference. So here we uh, are creating a, a class break style for a shape file as well. And we're going to key off the pH column in that shape file for our class break. And this is where we're going to set, you know, what, what um, type of point we want to use and what color we want to use depending upon what the pH value is for each uh, um, record in that shape file. So Here's where we're setting up all the different colors, and in this case, we're just doing it from RGB values and always doing a black uh, border for our point value. But again, if you don't want to mess with RGB values, you can just use the standard colors enumeration like we've done up here as well. So uh, once we've got our class break style set up, we just uh, go ahead and uh, create a new shapefile feature layer, giving it the path of where that point shapefile is. Add the class break to our custom styles collection and apply it for all zoom levels. 
And then the last thing uh, we're doing in this app is just adding those two layers to the map control. So we do our grid feature first since it's area based and then we lay our point layer on top of it and render the map out. So that's the end result here. The, uh, the grid file is kind of the base map here that you see of the field with all these uh, um, you know, contours uh, and that's based off of this uh, point sample data of the pH values. So as you can imagine somebody went out in this field and took different sample locations of the pH values and then the grid file is built accordingly based on those points uh, using an interpolation algorithm. So I hope this sample application walkthrough has been helpful. Uh, if you have questions, you can feel free to contact us or you can post your questions directly on our discussion forums at G GIS or I'm sorry, thinkgeo.com slash forums. Thank you for watching.